Shalom, Shalom, Shabbat Adonai. Welcome to the 6th Exodus program. Thank you for listening. The name of this segment is the Lamb's Book of Life. I'd like to read to you several scriptures to support my argument. And my argument is that only the Most High, the Eternal One, He who lives forever, knows whose name is in the Lamb Book of Life. Only He knows. No one else knows. Only He knows. I'd like to read to you several scriptures now from the book of Revelation to support my argument. Um, okay, let's begin with uh, Revelation chapter 3. Verse number 1 through 6. Well, let's start with verse 5. Chapter 3, verse 5. Then we go back and uh, go to 1 through 6. Okay. Let's begin. He that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white, in white raiment, and I will not blot out his name of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father. And before his angels. Revelation chapter 3. Verse 1 through 6. And unto the angel. Of the church in Sardis. Write. These things. Says he that has. Seven spirits of God. And. The seven stars. I know thy works. That thou as a name, that thou livest and art dead. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die. For I have not found thy works perfect before God. Remember, therefore, how thou hast received and heard, and hold fast and repent. If therefore thou hast not washed, I will come upon thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know the hour I will come upon thee. Thou hast a few names in Sardis which have not defiled their garments, and they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. He that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white, in white raiment, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. Revelation chapter 13 verse 8 And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names were not written in the book of life of the Lamb. Slain from the foundation of the world. That is an interesting dichotomy. Did you see that? all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him. Look at that. All them that dwell upon the earth shall worship him. Who on earth shall worship him? Since where is him on earth that they and who shall worship? Whose name was not written in the Lamb, in the life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. How is that? That's a that's a that's a dichotomy that you would not believe. How is that possible? The Lord is something serious. 
Oh, his wisdom. Oh, his wisdom and intelligence. Oh, the immaculate one, the holy one of Israel, the eternal one who lives forever. Oh, beautiful. The words of God make your mouth water. Revelation 17, verse 8. The beast that thou sawest was and is not and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition. And they that dwell on earth shall wonder whose name were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world when they behold the beast that was and he is not and yet he is that means Gentiles are going to they're going to see what America is their beloved America they're going to find out who their ancestors are and they're going to wonder. And they're going to be mad. You guys better get ready for an eternal civil war. They're going to find out. And whew, you're going to see some mad white folks. Oh boy. You guys better get to, you better get yourselves together. Hope you can find a peacemaker somewhere. That can bring all these people under subjection and calm them down. Oh, there's going to be some serious madness because you're playing with people's soul. You know, people have given their lives, their families, their lives going to church. And then you have done this to them. Oh, they're going to be mad at you. Oh, oh boy. Oh, it's going to be some problems coming up pretty soon. Oh, boy, I tell you. It's going to be some serious stuff going on pretty soon. Hey, we'll go to another scripture. Revelation chapter 20, verse 11 through 15. Uh, I want to say thank you for being patient with me and wait. And now uh, let's do this segment to I share with you what the Lord has put in my heart to say to the people of God who desire the sincere word of the Lord. Okay, verses 11 through 15. Okay, let's continue. And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heavens fled away. And there was no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were opened. And another book was opened, which was the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. Now, you know, you might have all against your brother, or you may have all against me. But if it's not written in that book, you can say what you want to say. Do what you want to do. But if it's not written in that book, and I have not offended you, if I have offended you or sinned against you, if I know, I will go to you and ask for forgiveness. Because that's what the Word of God says. Go to your brother. Go to your sister. Okay. But if you charge me, it need to be in that book. You want me to be dead? You want me to go away? If it's not in that book. Okay. Well, let's continue. I'm sorry. Going off task there. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were open. And another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which was written in the books according to the works. And the sea gave up the dead.
dead which were in it and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them and they which were judged every man according to their works and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire this is the second death and whosoever was not found written in the book of life were cast into the lake of fire oh that's pretty simple if you're not written in the book go to the fire it's just that simple you mean I can't check my GPS and go somewhere else uh, no it's going to be fire because God has made every soul There's no uh, alternative. Unfortunately, there's no alternative. This is the last scripture. And I want to say thank you for hanging in there with me. And allow me to finish. It's what the Lord has put in my heart. All right. Last scripture, Revelation 21, 27. And there shall no wise enter into is anything that defileth neither whatsoever worketh abomination or worketh a lie and maketh a lie but they that are written in a lamb's book of life okay now for my closing remarks and the ending of this segment the lamb's book of life you know uh is a most unfortunate thing in a perplexing situation that the world is in right now. Very perplexed. You know, um, and a, uh, a grievous, a grievous thing for the whole world, actually, because of the seed of Satan and sinful named man that are filled with greed, lust, and it's just a uh, terrible, it's a, it's a terrible situation right now because majority of the world is, uh, that are not in the Lamb's Book of Life because majority of the world has been, has been in idolatry, witchcraft, sexual immorality, all these deviant and you know sin is uh, you know there's a scripture in the Bible that says stolen water I believe I'm paraphrasing, but I think it's stolen water tastes better when drinking in secret place. Um, you know, I think Moses said that uh, that he would be a fool to say they're not um, that you can get some happiness out of sin. But when sin is full grown, it brings forth death. But the one thing about it is that what I've what I've noticed, and all things does not come with observation. I know this, but um, I think there's a something about being deviant and uh, being a habitual, habitual sinner. You know, it's uh, you know sometimes you can you can sin and uh, and then you know you like oh man it's like you did something without anyone knowing and you say so I got away with it and kind of feel like you cheated death or you cheated something and you got over and you made it through and you feel comfortable you say oh I made it I didn't think I was gonna get through that. And it was a tough decision, but I made it. And sometimes it seems sweet in your mouth. 
that you're obtaining riches or you've done something that no one else know like something secret or seductress or something that you seduce someone out of and it seems sweet in your mouth but at the same time uh, when, when you do wrong there should be some conviction in your heart that you don't want to continue doing the same thing because you acknowledge that it's wrong and it brings forth repentance you're, you're ashamed and you're sorrowful with remorse because it's something that you felt like you know you have the I can help it or something that is that you believe that was actually preventable however it got the best of you and sometimes it seems like some things get the best of you all the time as if like uh, sin is following you and you want to get free I imagine something perhaps similar like drugs or something that you have a that you would have a uh, desire to do it but, but that's when you have to cry out when you don't want to sin and you say I don't want to go to a devil's hell and that you, you strive for righteousness you strive for holiness you strive to have high moral values you strive to do things right by your fellow man you know you have a high moral code of ethics and you want to do better but it seems like sin is always present even when you want to do right but then there should come a time in your life that you should overcome this thing and that the fear of God that will permeate in your soul and it will outweigh any any sin or acts of sin and you will walk upright before God and be proud of your life because you can look back and say I was that but now I'm this and you can be happy about it not because of your sins but because God smiled on you and brought you out of that miry clay that you was in like Satan had a hold over you and you couldn't break free and then God held your cry and you came out and you no longer have those or those guilts or those things but um there is um something about abstain abstinence you know there are some things there are a lot, in fact, there are many things in the world that are in front of us, but we shall have power to abstain from them. And sometimes it can be very difficult to abstain. And for me, you have to practice to empty yourself of many things every day, throughout the day. What people say about you in your windows and hate, hateful marks, hateful statements, just hate it. And you cannot retaliate at these people. You have to forgive them. And you can't speak ill of them because they speak ill of you. You have to look beyond, forgive, keep going. And you have to do this all day and not let things build up in your life. Whether you like them or not, you have to keep your heart right before God and your mind right before God. And this is a this um, to practice this is a life is a lifetime practice. If you want to stay right before God and be what God wants you to be, as He said, "Be holy, for I am holy." To be holy and to be now all of our righteousness is as filthy rags. So don't think just because you do practice 
and that you have learned how to eliminate uh, things out of your mind by not letting the devil pile up all these things in your mind as far as greed, hate, deceit, and uh, getting back at someone. You know, it's, it's very easy to retaliate. And a lot of people like this. They like to keep up railing. You know, railing for railing. They say, well, he said this about you. What you got to say about it to him? It's like they, they like they like that. You know, well, he said this. So what you got to say? It's like a verbal duel. It's like a match of verbal kung fu. Okay, let's play verbal kung fu. Okay, you get your verbal sword out. And I'm going to practice my verbal kung fu on you. So we're going to have a verbal kung fu match. And we'll see who can out talk each other. And who can have the best debate as far as verbal kung fu. Okay, let's go. And you just talk one another in verbal kung fu until one says something derogatory. Or say something personal. And they consider that person the winner. Well, that's a uh, heathenistic. It's very to me, to me, it's very heathenistic. But um, we're going to end this segment now concerning your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life. If it's not written, you will not be saved. That's just the basics to it, and it doesn't have anything to do with race, gender, creed. Of ethnicity, background, morals, or upbringing. The Lord does not delight in the death of the unrighteous, nor his seed. But the Most High dwells in delight in those that seek righteousness and pursue holiness and flee sinful lust. You read the scriptures that said six things does the Lord hate, yea, seven are an abomination unto him. You read that. Okay, that's another subject. Okay, let's end the subject now. Thank you for listening, and thank you for listening to Six Exodus. Until we meet again, Mitzvah. Have a good day.